How's it going, everybody? John here, back with another Well Eternal video. Uh, last month, we had the enemies at the Gates Sealed League. We ended at 19 and 12, much to our dismay. But we have a new Sealed League this month, a search for answers. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing through this Sealed League, and it's pretty much structured the same way as the previous Sealed League, with a few exceptions. Uh, the big change is that now instead of each week you get one pack, you get two packs of the respective sets. And as well, that causes... There's a, f a few changes to the leaderboards as well, and that causes the, uh, the gold and gem price to go up. So we're going to jump on in. Same thing as last time. We're going to play all of our ranked matches on recording on YouTube, and then we'll, I'll do any of the uh, tiebreaker matches off recording, just so I can do them on my, at my own leisure. Uh, and we're going to jump on in and see what we can do. So... Let's see how we get on with it, with our special, special sealed cells. All right, let's see what we get. All right, so our first pack has a Crest of Impulse, which is eh, fine. Uh, we got a few decent red cards, uh, Cover of Darkness, which we had a really good time with uh, last time. Uh, turned out to be much better than I expected it to be. Uh, all right, let's see what we've got next. See if we can start narrowing down what color, what factions we should be in. Well, we opened the Dinosaur Stampede last time, and it was not good. So, and not a lot of signals here so far. Alright, I see Frontier Confessor, and I see Soaring Guard, Extinguish, and Shush. Sometimes you just need to silence a unit, and Shush could be playable, I don't, although I'm not too keen on it right now. And Failed Reflection. Alright, well, we've got a pretty decent Stone Scar card. Several more powerful Fire cards here, so... Let's see where we get to with Omens of the Past. Alright, Omens gives us Blood Letter. Alright, here's a powerful card that we want to play. There's also an Extract here. Also, Jotun Cyclops, Archive Curator. This pack's pretty good. Blood Letter being down of the creme de la creme there. Next we get Crown Watch Press Gang. Recently buffed Crown Watch Press Gang. I'm not sure how important this is going to be in Sealed unless we open another busted one drop, which I don't think we will. The rest of this pack's pretty average. Alright, let's look at Empty Throne. And there we go. Here's a, here's a reason to play Time. Predatory Carnosaur. So we may want to try to play Carnosaur if we get the chance to. Also got an Elysian Stranger, so that would help here out as well. Uh, rapid Shot, Maul, and Combust. Also reasons to play Stone Scar. Last pack. Let's see what we get. Oh, regular Rare, so no Legendaries. And it's Stronghold's Visage. Alright, well... We didn't get a ton of really kind of busted cards. So, ooh, I also like that they did the new card overlay here. That's nice. I like that. Helps you see kind of what it is that you're uh, you're working with. When you're just kind of like flipping through your cards. We do have a lot of upper level, upper cost time cards. So that might be something we need to look into. And I'm just doing this for my own sanity. Listen, we all have our own peculi peculiarities with uh, with things. So just let, let me have this, okay? Let me have this. Alright. So. Actually, I'm just going to do this too. Get that shift stone. Alright. So let's start off with all of our fire cards and see how they look like on on curve. This is always my first kind of step whenever I'm doing any sort of sealed deck idea. And uh, okay, so we have a lot of units. We have six units, but that's not a whole ton. Especially with Bravo really requiring gunslingers. Uh, like Young Gun is not a great unit. We don't want to play Dwarbot. We'd rather not play Tumble Bang because we're not super heavy into fire anyways. Like, the only card I think I'm, really, like, really keen on here is, like, you know, Into the Furnace, maybe Barbarian Camp, and, like, Stone Scar Maul. So I'm thinking fire is not where we're going to end up being. Now we can look at our uh, multi-faction cards here and see if we would want to pull into one direction. Uh, having Crest of Impulse is nice to splash fire in a time deck. Um, so, and so we could probably like Purify as well as uh, the Into the Furnace. Uh, there's also Battle Blur Centaur if we end up with Justice, which is decent. 
Uh, Stone Scar has two, or Skycrack has two good cards in Caleb's Choice and Storm Glider. And then Stone Scar has Combust and Failed Reflection. So that's going to be, that'll be something that we can look into later. So let's now look at time. So we've got this, Bobble. And again, I'm just putting, putting everything in here right now. Like, there's plenty of cards that I would rather not play that, you know, we may have to play depending on how things pan out. All right, so here is our time cards. And, uh, well, <clears throat> I'm not super excited about much of this. You know, I mean, there's Carnosaur and Pillar, which are both really powerful cards. Uh, but, however, they're both triple time and require a heavy time influence. So, whether or not we're able to play them is going to be really dependent on how good the rest of our time is. And we do have Fishing Dinoc and Archive Curator, and we've also got this Spelunker. Familiar's fine, but the rest of this time just isn't very good either. So I'm thinking that time is not on the menu, despite having one of our best rares in, uh, in Predatory Carnosaur. So now we'll look at Justice, and one thing to remember here is that if we can play, is how many, um, excuse me, how many Gunslingers we get. Because if we have enough Gunslingers, then suddenly, um, Herod Bravo becomes better. And here, again, it's not looking super good. I mean, we've got Frontier Confessor, that's like, you know, heading up the pack. Uh, we've got Crown Rots Press Gang, which can get Steady Marshal. Rampart Protector, if we have Valkyries, which we don't really seem to have. Uh, Mark of Shame is unplayable. Like, Valkyrie Cadet's fine. Tireless Stranger is just good on its own. Like, this this pool is pretty below average, I would say. And we may be struggling, we may actually be struggling for playable, so we may have to play three factions. But you never know. We'll see how the rest of the how the rest of the seal pool kind of looks. I mean, obviously I felt that our seal deck was a little bit better last time than it performed, but you know, again, that's all up to expectations. So here's our primal. It's very shallow, heavier on two, which is fine. Like scaly Gron is a perfectly good defensive unit. Uh, if we're trying to play a slower game because we're playing multiple factions, but Big boon here. A lot of our primal is actually pretty decent. Obviously, obviously, there's a few stinkers like Sinister Opportunist and Snowfort, but our primal overall is is actually not half bad. So we may have to look into seeing if we can play our primal. Now, our primal does work better with our time because we do have a few dinosaurs. So if we do that, we would want to see if we can play, like, maybe Elysian, maybe Splash It. Now here's the big test, because turns out we don't have many Shadow cards at all. But the power level of our Shadow cards is fairly high. We have Rapid Shot, Extract, and Extinguish. But we just don't have the depth here. So that's going to be something that is going to hurt us a little bit. Like, we may have to end up splashing Extinguish... Although, I don't think that that is going to be an issue yet. So now, since we don't have this, these many, or the best of options here, and we only have one, we have a Huru Banner and a Crest of Impulse, so our ability to splash is heavily mitigated. So I guess the question is, what do we look to to playing these cards? Also, all right, we have a Legion Stranger, which can also help a little bit in fixing. Huh, this is rough. This is real, real troublesome. Huh. Alright, so let's just go through and put all the cards that I would be happy to play into here and see where we go from there. I would happily play Pummel. I would happily play Into the Furnace. In a Fire Deck, I'm fine playing Rampage. Playing Sparkatcher, playing the Machetes. I would play Hoof Slash, I'd play Temple Raider, I'd play Barbarian Camp, I'd play the Maul. I would want to play Heroic Bravo, but I'm not quite there yet. 
play each of those, play the familiar. I probably main main deck the uh, main deck at decay. Wisp is fine. These are all fine. These are fine. These would also be fine, although not super keen on those. Uh, invigorate, poster, stranger cadet, uh, confessor, maybe ground crew, mace, potentially horn grinder, uh, intervention, levitate, yeti, gruon, gruon, unseal, chucker, crusher, crasher, excuse me, jotun cyclops, kyrex, driver, mantisaur, uh, rapid shot. I would play slasher. You, you. Well, maybe not. Maybe not, Matt. Well, we do have combust in our pool, so maybe I could actually do something with with that. Uh, let's see. No, yes. I'll put that in there. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Shield bash. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Maybe. Yes, and yes, if, I, if I'm Zenon. Okay. So, we have 63 potential playables. So let's... Hmm. And most of our playables are in time. Hmm. So if we end up... If we try Elysian, we can splash fire for Purify and Into the Furnace... And then also potentially Stormcrasher, maybe? Let's look at that. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, we don't want Rampage or Rapid Shot or Invigorate. Da, da, da. Now, this would be a place where I would really, really like to be able to do this all uh, in paper, like in, hold it out in front of me. I'm a very, very much a visual kind of viewer when it comes to uh, this style of uh, of deck building. But again, you know, each person has their own methods and uh, how they want to you know, go through things. So this would be roughly our playables with regards to Elysian splashing fire. We're not playing pummel in this deck, so. Let's see. How many Sentinels do we have for Intriguing Ancient? So it costs eight. And we've got Ageless Sentinel, and that's it. All right, so probably off of that. Mantisaur wants Dinosaurs. We've got one, two, three, four Dinos. Oh, five, six Dinos. I guess that's fine. This deck, prob well, this deck probably doesn't want Snow Chucker. Well, I think we've, we may have hit a problem here. Oh no, this would, this would be 18 power, alright. And I think 4 fire would be a necessity here. Maybe 3. Because I, we don't necessarily want to play our fire cards on curve anyways. Oh wait, what am I doing? We have a we have a sigil for that. Or we have a crest, excuse me. Take me to... Hey. You guys, you guys saw that, right? It's not going. All right, that was awkward. All right. Well, we won't. We, yeah, we'll be playing this crest probably over a fire sigil. So, how does this look? We've got nineteen units. That's a decent amount. We've got some evasive units. We have some good ground units on the to kind of defend ourselves. We have some pretty solid finishers in Carnosaur, Pillar, Behemoth, and Mantasaur. Plus, Stampede Driver is probably pretty good in this style of deck as well. Seasoned Spelunker can also randomly just help us get to our upper cost units. I think this looks fine. I don't think we're giving up too much playing this style of deck so hmm and also yeah, obviously we're not playing dinosaur stampede because that card is not great in limited now i could see a world where i want to play excavation assistant or even sanctuary priest but pr the only combo we have with priest is premonition wisp 
And I'd rather just have it here as primarily just a three power two two instead of a uh, a reliable source of kind of damage, so to speak. And I think this is fine. Well, hold on. I am. I do have this disjunction in the main. I guess we can have it to pick up our etchings. Hmm. Is there any? If I do, I have a better. Actually, I should also cut this waystone or add this waystone instead of a time sigil. Is there something better than disjunction in our factions? So let's find out. I'd rather not splash another fire card over it, but we'll... Hmm. I don't know if there is. Like, am I supposed to play Bobble? This card seems so bad, though. Like, really, really bad. Maybe I'm supposed to play it over Disjunction. Because otherwise I only have, like, one way to get the Reckless Radiant. Or Restless Radiant off a of Premonition Wisp. I could see that. Yeah, I think we'll try this. I'm not excited. But we'll try this. And whoa, look at that. Oh, no. It said we had rank 1 for a little bit there. Well, alright. Let's jump on in. Now, I feel less confident about this deck than I did about our previous sealed deck. But we'll see how it plans... We'll see how it plays out. Uh, I think this hand is keepable on the draw. It's not exciting by any means, but... It's got a 1-drop and a 2-drop and a 3-drop and a 4-drop. It has one of our splash cards, but... Purify can be very good, uh, given the right circumstances. Fishing Dynock was not the card I wanted to find, but, you know, I'd rather find power cards. And we're playing 18 of them, so it we should be able to find it. I play a Obsidian Golem. Well, that's awkward, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I don't think I attack because I don't want them to make a have the Obsidian Armor. So I'm just going to play Scaly Gruon and pass. I don't want them to just surprise me and put it on something big and flying. Like Skeeter, for example. We'll play our Amber Waystone and play Avrax Familiar and say go. Like, yeah, if I'd attacked, they would have snap traded and then this would be a 3-4 flyer with Lifesteal and I could not beat that card. I mean, I think I just block here. Like, if they have a pump spell they want to use, then sure. Ooh, Lethry Ranger and Slumbering Stone. Okay. So our opponent has essentially gone pretty deep here. Um, and I think I'm fine just using my Kyrex to trade with this Skeeter. It's going to be more annoying in the long run that for them to have a Skeeter as opposed to, you know, dealing with their board. And I'll just get in for one. Not that big of a deal. Opponent plays an Inspire. Nice little card to help kind of get through the deck a little bit faster. They have nothing. There we go. Now we're drawing some power. So I could play Aegis Sentinel here. And I did think about playing it last turn. But I think instead we're just going to play a 6-6. And get it in the air. It's going to be really hard for them to beat a 6-6 on the ground. Yep, Stone Scar Stranger is what got inspired. Again, we've got we've got the ground on lockdown. So we'll just play a time sigil and play Ageless Sentinel. And until we find something like a Stampede Driver or Ooh. 
Well, I found the reason our opponent's playing uh, Justice. Makuto is a serious card to deal with. I would love to find my fire so I can purify it, but I think I'm just going to play out two spells here and say go. Looks like our opponent opened up good cards, even though I have asked repeatedly for the Mar opponents not to have good cards. However, you know, there's no way for us to... Ooh, there we go. Perfect. Archive Curator does the exact same job as Purify does, except better. Because now I put a 1-4 on the board, and doesn't require us to find our fire influence anytime soon. And we find our Carnosaur. Excellent. We're just going to... Um, so I could play this Carnosaur here, but there's nothing I want to hit here yet. So I'm just going to uh, ultimate our Stormcrasher and start getting it in the air for serious clips of damage. And say go. Like, our opponent cannot... doesn't have any really good attacks. Also, if they're playing Copper Hall Recruit, then they may be in the same boat that we are. Where they're just kind of a, few, a little bit short on playables. Or maybe they're splashing fire for, like, Obsidian Golem. Interesting. Uh, we're going to use our crest here, just to get a little more information. Season Spelunker. Yeah, I'll keep Spelunker on top. Also opens up Purify as a reasonable card for us to use in the future. And we'll just say go here. Our opponent... Oh, Roland's Choice. All right, so that's going to slow down our Assault a little bit. So. But, it's not going to slow it down in any real way. Well, I guess it makes it a three-turn clock instead of a two-turn clock. All right, well, we found Spelunker. We'll get it in the air. And then I will play... And ult Spelunker and, and say go. Use all of our power the most that we can. Ah, Spirit Blade Stalker. Well, that's going to be annoying as well. Uh, depending on what they want to give lifesteal. Uh, because they, if they give Makto lifesteal, that's kind of going to be a big game for them. Uh, but I think it's going to be in our best interest just to purify the Stalker. That way they can't gain lifesteal off of something. Get in for three in the air. And I guess I could Carnosaur and kill Makto. But I'm just going to say go. Like, on the off chance that something absurd happens. I want to have, have easy answers. Like, if they have a Combust or a Devour or a Vainglory Patrol. That way we get to use our Carnosaur to eat your flying blocker and then get in for lethal damage. All right, we got there. We drew the right cards at close to the right time, managed to uh, silence that Makto before he got out of hand. And we're 1-0, we're only in 340, 3,427th place. That's kind of to be expected. All right. That one was close. If we didn't if we didn't assemble the board state that we did as early as we did, we could have been really far in the back foot. Thankfully we had our turn one Snowcrust Yeti. And they didn't have turn two uh Lethri Ranger. Oh man. No, I'm gonna keep this because I'm a monster. But if we lose because of power screw, it's my fault. Opponent's on Minotaur Oathkeeper. Well, I hope our opponent has a plan for Scaly Gruon. Now, I, I know that I can't, like, eat the Minotaur Oathkeeper, but... Ooh, banner. Into nothing. All right, well... We want power cards, deck. We don't... I know there are 16 more of you in there. Wow, double banner? How lucky. All right, let's see what our opponent's follow-up is going to be. Spire Chaplain. 
Hey, there you are. Uh, so I think I'm going to play this Avrax Familiar and just say go. And I'm playing the Familiar here because if I get to get in and make the Snowball off of Jotun Cyclops, I really want that to happen. So I can kill this Minotaur Oathkeeper. Yeah, our opponent's going to get in, for, he's going to draw just a Sigil, and they're going to get in for four because I'm not too keen on trading my board for a Spire Chaplain. See what their follow-up is. Storm Crasher Well. That was not what I wanted their follow-up to be. I wanted to be able to get a snowball. So I think what I'm going to do... Man, do I really want to play a no-value Jotun Cyclops? Uh. Hmm. So alternatively, I could serve with these two and see how they block. They could make this trade, but I don't think they are. Yeah, let's do this attack. Because I, I do not want to lose my Avrax Familiar, because the Avrax Familiar is kind of important. So they did the no blocks, which lets us get our snowball, which is excellent for us. Honestly surprised they didn't block at all, but you never know. So now our opponent is kind of in the mode of, what do I want to do here? What am I thinking about? Because they can attack their Spire Chaplain into our Jotun Cyclops, at which point they would just trade. And I think I'm fine with that. We'll see. Whirling Duo. Okay, so they, instead they decide to go with a different plan. Well, I think I trade with this Whirling Duo now. It makes sense why they're splashing for fire. Uh, sadly, I think I'm just going to take five here as well, which is not ideal. But we do have a snowball to get rid of the uh, get rid of the annoying Minotaur Oathkeeper. I'll just pop it off right now. Um, and do I want to hold up Unseal or Decay here? I don't know. I think I'd rather just play Premonition West. So I'm going to get in with my creatures that aren't blocking anyways, and then just play Premonition Wisp and say go. See what our opponent does here. And this is kind of the one problem, I think, with, that our deck has, that outside of our fatties, we really don't have any sort of beef, like big statted units on the bottom end. Like, Snowcrest Jetty is great in ranked, but in, in, li in limited, it's just average at best. Snowcrasher gets it, or Stormcrasher gets in there. Valkyrie Arcanist. Well... Arcanist is annoying. Sadly, I think we just have to say go. I really want to get that Arcanist off the board, but I'm not... Well, we could draw our Archive Curator, which would be pretty good here. Although I really just want power cards so that we can play our Pillar. Uh, sadly, I'm not blocking, so I'm going to be taking five here. Opponent falls up with Serpent Trainer. All right, we drew <laughs> Cryptic Etchings, which is not good. Well, let's Etchings and Scout. Top card is Sigil. Man, I really want that Sigil, but I can't, don't think I can take it. I think we say go. Man, I th yeah, we've just been on the back foot this whole game. Sadly. Yeah? Well, I'm going to block the Serpent Trainer only because... Not because it saves more damage, but because it puts fewer flyers in play. And it gives me, like... Oh, they have Into the Furnace. Well, we do not want that to happen. 
We kind of need our uh, Premonition Wisp. Or do they also have an Unseal? No. Or do they have another removal spell? Nope. And, to the surprise of no one, we are dead in the air. Even if they played an attachment, we couldn't decay it to gain life because we would still be exactly dead in the air. Well, as has been said time and time again, evasion is good in limited. It's almost like it's just a maxim of limited play. Yeah, just again, that's why Huru Flyers can be a very, very powerful archetype if, there, if the cards come together in the right way. Alright, let's see how round three goes. Uh, this hand is not good. Only has primal sigils. Let's try again. This hand is better, but it has my least favorite card in it, so you know how I feel about it. We're going to play turn one Snowcrest Yeti because we can. It's also, you know, probably our best one turn one play. Uh, we'll play etchings on two and then get in four two. Sig you. Opponents on Rakano, but they're on the Rakano do nothing plan, it seems. We'll get in. We will scout with etchings. Time Sigil. I do want the third Time Sigil. And then we'll use our power and play Bobble. I want that third Time Sigil so that I have three for a Pillar of Amar as well as for... Uh, uh, what's the card thing you have? Predatory Carnosaur. Our opponent plays Skycrack Huntsman, which if they find a Relic will deal with our Snowcrest Yeti over two turns. But it means we can't attack. So let's Etchings. Stormcrasher. Yes, I want Stormcrasher. And then because we have the power, we'll gain a life and say go. Opponent plays Recogulator. And we're not blocking. Recogulator, when it dies, you make two Grenadine. We will play our Stormcrasher and then we'll scout. Elysian Stranger. I think... Hmm... I think I could do better than Elysian Stranger at this stage in the game. And then I don't want to trade my Snowcrest Yeti for Recalculator on attack, so I'm just going to say go. Magma Javelin. Well, Magma Javelin is not what I wanted to see. Only attacking with the Recalculator. Interesting. Well, I guess he gets to stay back anyways. Nah, no blocks. This is fine. Unseal. Alright, we'll play Sigil. We'll scout. Time Sigil. That does get me to 7, but I think I want to find action as opposed to just playing a naked 5-5. Five five. And then we'll say go. Play, I want to play Stalwart Shield, which is going to be really annoying to deal with. We find Levitate. Let's scout Sigil. All right. Well, I'll keep the Sigil here so that I can, you know, draw it off of here and then get in for two. And then we'll gain some life and say go. So I did I did that. I didn't explain that very well. Our opponent gets an armor off of Emerald Acolyte into Aerial Attendant. Well, that's going to be annoying. Uh, but I did that. Oh, perfect draws. Uh, because in case we draw a power card, then I get to go Pillar of Amar and play a power to make more make another 5-5. Five five. Here, though, I'm just going to Carnosaur, kill your 4-3 in the air. And then they gain some more armor, and then we gain a life and say go. Yeah, I do not want them attacking with a 4-3 flyer. What, they have an Akaria? Alright, well... Well, look... Sometimes people just have man. And to think that we had predatory carnosaur in our deck and yet we get blown out for killing our opponent's big threat when they play follow up with an even bigger threat. 
Well, cards like Ikaria end games, and they end games for good reason. Well, man, there's not even anything I can really do here. All right, well, let's see. Let's scout. Primal Sigil doesn't do it. Gain the life. Season Spelunker. Like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. I was dead to the 4-3 flyer anyways, but then our opponent just plays... Man. Where were you? Not even not even good enough at, at, this, at this stage of the game. Like, I get to pop your, that Aegis. I get to scout. Time Sigil goes away. Gain a life. Like... Yep, got a block. No other options. Well, there's... Make another 5-5. Five, five. Scout. Fire Sigil doesn't do it. Gain a life. Now yeah, let's just make the stupid Power Stone. And, yeah, there's nothing that we can do here. Ikaria is... Whew. I'm not mad that I'm losing to Ikaria. I mean, a little bit. Oh yeah, there you go. Just casual 23-23. Jesus. Well, cards like Ikaria exist to end games. And uh, we got whooped. We got max punished for killing the first Valkyrie that we saw. And then just... Yeah, no. I mean, their deck was good. We were a little too slow. Like, that's a game where I think if we get if we played a three-game set, I don't know if we would have won every... I don't know if we would have won the match on a three-game set. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. But I do think that in that previous match that we would have had a good shot at doing so. Especially knowing that we had to play around both Akaria and another 4-3 flyer. Our opponent plays Scrap Hound, and I was going to play this Cryptic Etchings, but we just grew, drew Scaly Grawn, which completely invalidates this 1-1 one, one until they get a few more cards in play. They have nothing? Interesting. We'll just play Premonition Wisp and say go. I don't want to use my Levitate here, just a cantrip. Wanted poster on the Wisp, sure. Ooh, we drew Decay. Oh, man. Our opponent's going to have a mediocre time. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll just say go. Because now, if our opponent tries to kill our Premonition Wisp, we get to decay it in response. And, ooh, Barbarian Camp. Would I rather... Yeah, I would rather kill their Barbarian Camp as opposed to killing their Wanted Poster. Yeah. So I did that because, you know, sure, them drawing two cards is pretty bad, but I'd rather, you know, make put a 4-4 into play here and kill off their extra power as opposed to denying them the potential for card draw. Confessor's probably hitting our flyer, yep. That is as expected. Alright, we draw. Stampede Driver. Ooh, I like Driver here. So I'm going to play Driver. We're going to pitch Etchings onto our Radiant, making it a 5-5. Five, five. And I'll hold back Premonition Wisp only because now they get to trade forward and draw cards. And we'll say go from here. This also sets us up nicely to levitate a unit to win the game. Ooh, Hot Barrel Revolver. All right, all right, all right. They get to draw cards off of Wanted Poster anyways. No attacks there, though. Interesting. So, let's see here. Can we kill them this turn? Because I can Kyrex, kill the Scrap Hound, levitate the 5-5, five five, attack with everything, 
They block here. They would take they would take eight, go to two, then they would take one off of knight, go to nine. Alternatively, I can jump the radiant, attack only with driver. If they block driver here, I get to use Kyrex to kill it, and then they're still in a bad spot. Yeah, I think I like that. I'm going to jump the Radiant with Levitate. Ooh, they have a they have a one cost card they can use. Make these these attacks. Yep. Then Kyrex. Eat, kill your guy. Ah, oh, they had Temper. Okay. Well, got blown out a little bit there, but I still think that was more or less correct. I'm not going to play around a deal one damage effect. Why do so many people have Ikaria? Why? Why? Like, sure, our deck's not very good either, but... Jesus. Oh my god. Like, it's not even that I'm, like, mad. I'm just dumbfounded. Two Ikarias in a row. Two Ikarias in a row. I'm just, I'm, I just, I just don't know anymore. Did we get dealt a bad hand? Like, which legendary lottery did I forget to sign up for? Like, come on! Well, I wanted to do better than last, the last week we had. Where we started off one and four. Although for some reason I'm getting the distinct feeling that we're going to. Uh, we're going to keep this hand. It's missing Primal, but we have Cryptic Etchings and Avrax Familiar. And I think that the strength of those is going to get us to the Promised Land. Well, that was not what I was intending to draw, but it'll do. Alright. Uh, I think we play Avrax over Premonition Wisp. Opponent's Crafty Yeti. Ooh. There we go. Primal Sigils. Uh, we'll get in for one here, and then we'll just play out Yeti and Stormcrasher. This gives us the option of ultimating the Stormcrasher next turn. Oh, opponents like us playing three factions as well. Oh, snap trade. I do not want you to hit me with a crafty yeti. I'll find my Especially if your follow-up is bold adventurer and trailmaker. Alright. Elysian Stranger is fine, but we're still gonna just ult and get... Oh, dang it! Uh, that was a misclick. I was holding it back on defense. I don't want you to attack with your tutus. Clearly. Bang Sarasar, sure. And Huru Stranger, sure. Belgi Behemoth is a nice draw, so is Scaly Gruon. Well, let's go ahead and get on in. And I think I'm going to play Stranger and Gruon here as opposed to playing like Wisp. Just want to put bodies in play right now. We already have air superiority, so we should be pretty far ahead of the race. Plus, if we ever land our 8th power to play Belching Behemoth, then suddenly the race just becomes nigh unwinnable for them. Let's see what our opponent decides. Nothing there, alright. We, we, we drew Waystone, which is great. We're going to start by attacking in the air, however. And then 
Permanition Wisp into Amber Waystone. Make a free 4-4. Four four. We'll scout now. Archive Curator. I do want Archive Curator. I want Curator more than I want 8th Power for Belching Behemoth. Opponent plays another Time Sigil. Ooh. Smork, eh? So I think we do this block. I think we do this block. And then I think I do this block and this block. I don't know what our opponent was thinking doing that attack. Unless they're admitting defeat. Oh! Oh! I see. So wait, why are they time? Or why are they... Why are our opponent's decks so good? Uh, Decay does nothing. <laughs> uh... Curator to pop the Aegis. So we beat one legendary because we beat Makto. However, we did not beat and we did not play around Molot and Nakova. And by gods, their deck is is built to be to do mullet and Nakova y things. Yeah, no. Come on in. The water's fine. So you played an 8 power card, and I did too. Mine's a little worse than yours, though. Just a hair. So, we beat Makto. However, we lost to Ikaria, Ikaria, and Mola and Nakova. Jeez. This is not our week. Wow.